The first thing to do is to connect the keyboard using a USB cable. Plug one end into the USB to host socket on the back of the keyboard and the other end to your PC. Also connect an audio cable to the phone's output and if it's a stereo cable then the other two jack plugs will go into the two channels on your audio interface left and right and then you might need to make adjustments to the level but you can do this later on once you start recording as well. Next power up the keyboard and then press the function button and then use the arrows to get to the MIDI page and in the MIDI page press enter and turn local off. So when you first load up Studio One you should get a page that looks like this and you can configure the audio device and your external devices from this page but in some ways the easiest thing to do is just to start a new song so we'll click on new song and then you've got various templates we're going to select empty song and we can give it a name as well and then just click on OK and then that takes us straight to the main sequencer page with the bars running across the top and now what we're going to do is set up um, a new keyboard and a new instrument. So go to the Studio One menu and go to the very bottom of that list to Options at the bottom. Select Options and now you'll get this window appear. And in this window make sure that you're on External Devices and then from external devices you can click on add. At the top of this list now on this window there's a new keyboard. There are other templates for um, other devices and instruments uh, but we're going to create our own new keyboard. So click on that and where it's got manufacturer you can add the manufacturer's name in there if you want to. For the device name I'm going to call this CTX, which is the type of keyboard, and I'm going to say Receive. Because this is the MIDI that we're going to receive from the keyboard into the sequencer. Where it's got MIDI channels, we'll leave all of these MIDI channels on, 1 to 16. So we're going to be receiving MIDI from Casio USB MIDI. So we're going to select Casio USB MIDI. We're not going to send it back to the Casio but we are going to select split channels and default instrument input. Once you've done that click on OK. Now you can see that it appears as one of our external devices. So that's going to get MIDI coming into the sequencer. Now we need to be able to send the MIDI back out to the keyboard. So again we're going to click on Add. This time select a new instrument. Again you can put in the manufacturer's name and this time I'm going to call it CTX Send. So this is the MIDI that's going to be sent back to the keyboard. We're not going to fill in Receive From. We are going to select Send to Casio USB MIDI. We're going to select all the MIDI channels but we're not going to select any of these tick boxes here. Now we can click on OK and now you can see that that appears in our list of external devices and it's going to be sending MIDI to the Casio. Now we can click on OK and that will disappear.
Next, we're going to create a MIDI track. So go up to the Instruments label here. And where it's got it, External Instruments, you should now see um, the instrument that you've created. So I've got CTX Send. It might just be hidden by this tab. And you can just drag it onto the main sequencer page and it will create a MIDI track. We can close this pop-up if that appears. And now if you look on the left-hand side of the screen, you can see a MIDI track has been created. And if I play a few notes on the keyboard, you'll also see um, a little indicator showing that MIDI is arriving and being sent back out. So it's being received and being sent from the CTX keyboard. So now that we know that MIDI is being received and sent, we can record into this track. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to create a two bar loop. So if I go down to the bottom of the screen where the transport bar is lurking, I'm going to click on right and make this bar three. So it's the beginning of bar three, bar one and bar two to the beginning of bar three and turn on the loop and you'll see a blue line appear on the bar ruler at the top. And let's just make this fill the screen a bit more, make it a bit bigger by zooming here. A little bit too far. Also on the, at the bottom of the screen on the transport uh, bar at the bottom is a metronome. So we can turn the metronome click on and we can have a little pre-count as well. We can leave the tempo at 120, but you can change that if you want to. So now when I click on record here, the track is armed ready for recording and we'll be able to record some MIDI notes into this track. So now we can listen back to our MIDI. You can hear that it changed the timing a little bit because I had quantize on, but I quite like that, so I'm going to leave it as it is. So what we've done is recorded MIDI. We haven't recorded the actual sound of the keyboard. If you want to capture the sound of the keyboard, you need to create an audio track. So if you go up to the very top list to the track menu and add audio track, I'm going to add a stereo track. It creates a track here for the audio. The icon here changes. It's more like a waveform rather than a keyboard and we can arm this track in the same way that we can arm a MIDI track for recording. Just turn off the monitor if you don't want to hear the sound coming back slightly delayed and we don't need to record any more MIDI. So now when I click on record we'll be recording sound rather than MIDI. Let's mute the MIDI now. And you can see how this is a waveform. It's not um, MIDI notes that have been played from a keyboard. It's an actual waveform. You can um, normalize this waveform, make it a bit stronger just by typing out N. And you can also trim it. It's slightly out of step with the metronome um, because of latency, but you can obviously, now you've got this, you can uh, edit it and trim it and just tidy it up a little bit as well. But I hope that shows you how to record 
audio into Studio One. OK, so the next thing I'm going to do is actually delete this track of audio. Remove the track. And we're going to create some more MIDI tracks. And again, the way to do that is just to drag and drop them onto the main sequencer page. And we can just keep going, add two or three more. So we're going to add three more MIDI tracks. And if you look at the list of tracks, um, they're on different MIDI channels. So our first one, MIDI channel one, channel two for track two, channel three for track three, and channel four for track four. For track four, I'm going to change this to MIDI channel 10 because we're going to record some drums onto this track and uh, some use some different tones on the other tracks as well. So let me show you how to do that. First of all, if you click on I, the letter I in the very top left hand corner, another column appears showing um, parameters for specific tracks. And you can select program numbers here and also bank numbers here. But in some ways it's more convenient or a little bit more um, reliable to create a, an automation track. So that's what we're going to do here. So if I click on this little icon at the top, then it slightly changes in each of the track and now we've got this display off. So if we click on this tab here, we're going to add a program change. So we select a program change, click on add here, and it drops in program change. Let's close that. And you can now see on our track that we recorded earlier, as well as the MIDI notes being represented, we've also got this line, this automation line. Um, next to it in the column of the tracks, there's a little bar here and if we just scroll that you can see the line moving up and down. So this is sending program changes to the keyboard. I'm going to set this to a program change uh, number five which is an electric piano. You can also double click and type in the number so that's a little bit easier. Let's do that. Zero 05 and also I can change the name of this track to E Piano. Press return. And now let's have a listen to the track that we recorded earlier. And you can hear how it's now an electric piano sound rather than the piano stage piano sound that I recorded uh, with earlier. So let's set up some other program changes on the other MIDI tracks. Again, click on display, add, program change, click on add here. We can close this now, the little blue line appears. And for track number two, I'm gonna make this a bass tone. I can double click on the number patch number or program number. So this is 34 for a bass tone. And again I can name this track. Let's call it bass guitar. Track number three I'm going to do the same thing. Create an automation lane or track. Program change. Click on add. Can close that. The blue line appears and we're going to use a flute tone here. So let's set this to 74. I'm just using general MIDI uh, numbers, patches, programs here rather than getting into bank changes, but you can also send bank messages. Um, this track to channel 10 for the drums. 
So let's drums or percussion. Track number three was going to be flute. So now we've got a little band of electric piano and I can record some bass guitar, flute and drums. So let's go and record some bass guitar. Let's have a listen back to the electric piano and the bass. Next we'll record the drums and I'll just leave this in loop mode and, and, and then I can just keep adding new percussion ideas over the top of each other. So let's have a listen now back to the E piano, the bass guitar and the drums. And then finally we'll add a little flute melody over the top. Let's have a listen to all four tracks together. Obviously we could also um, record the audio of those tracks and then edit them further and add different effects and things. Uh, but I'm just showing you the potential of MIDI and also the potential of using the CTX as a tone module. I hope that was useful. Thanks for watching.